Good morning Vietnam. and welcome in. Here we go. <laughs> hey. This is The Connect Show live from Expansive in Wauwatosa. My name is Mitch Nellis, a.k.a. Thunder. I'm going to introduce Tracy and Kim in just one second, but we're so excited. February is here. It's gray. It's the doldrums, and we got no time or patience for it because we got to get moving. Business is happening. It's happening every minute. It's happening every day. It's happening every, every second that we are moving forward, building our small business community, building our business community, hearing from experts, and getting to better places. And Lori, this is for you overcoming obstacles. Lori's going to teach us all about that later today. With that, again, my name is Mitch Nellis. Welcome to The Connect Show. Here are my friends, Kim and Tracy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mitch. That's such energy. I don't even know where you get that from so early in the morning. She's got to fire up. This expansive mug, yeah. beautiful mug, by the way. Thank you, <laughs> everyone. Uh, definitely what's in the mug It does helps. help. It does help a lot. So welcome everybody to The Connect Show. We are in episode 21, season three. I cannot believe it. Today we are discussing networking, finances, business strategy, and all the things. My name is Tracy Champagne, and I'm super cool, that's as what, it says. And That's where um, you, you interject yeah, like yes. all the great things you do and who you but, are. But I am super cool, super so, cool. so it's, a, it's very story. fitting. It's very fitting. But anyways, um, I'm the owner of Small Business Milwaukee. We're a small business resource center. We do a lot of website design, social media, marketing, all the different things to help get your business seen online. And I'm joining my partner in crime over here, Kim Nock. Good morning, everybody. I am Kim Nock. It says what up. So I'm going to say what up. I love Mitch's energy. It makes me happy. And I'm supposed to say I'm awesome because I'm just awesome. Um, I have a small business opportunities knocking. I do digital market marketing. I work with Tracy for small business Milwaukee and I do some in-person networking events. So it ties really nicely into our theme for today. Tracy does a ton of virtual um, networking events and small business Milwaukee does a quarterly in person. So it's a ton of fun. We are jazzed up to have our guests, Lori Rifkin and Rachel Lamantia. Tracy and I are looking forward to our conversations with them very much. And we also like to start our show by thanking all of our sponsors and partners. The Connect Show is brought to you by Connect Media Live, which is largely all the people sitting here. We help businesses reach one to many through social media, web development, and video. So if you like this show, if you like to see what's going on here and would like to have this going on in your business, contact us and we will help you get it started. So visit- who, who doesn't want their own TV? I mean, right. didn't we all right. grow up wanting our, we either want to be like sports stars or astronauts or have our own TV show. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can do it. And if you're one of those people that didn't want your own TV show, we can help you get comfortable so you can have your own TV show yeah, because true. it can be a little stressful sometimes. Yeah. I yeah. was not a camera person. <laughs> no. Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not, not, I sit here every week. No. And, some, and sometimes when people sit with like my type of energy, I can be a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I get that. I understand that. I can bring it down a little bit. I, I can be fun. cool. <laughs> I, think I can it's have fun. a conversation. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. You're our hype guy for a reason. That's right. right. That's exactly. Right. Thank you. That's why we picked you. We have to also thank our hosting sponsor, Expansive Workspace. We have a live studio audience today because of Expansive Ooh, hello, Workspace. Hello. Hey. We're going to make them do all the things today. Maybe we'll we'll shove some people in front of the camera. They won't like that. Um, <laughs> we broadcast this out of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, and we have a beautiful backdrop. It's a little cloudy and yucky out today, but hey, whatever. But we're bringing we the sunshine. You see that water mm -hmm. tower back there? We bring the sunshine. That's Absolutely. Right, exactly. Um, there is also a location in downtown Milwaukee, Madison, Wisconsin, and all over the country. If you're interested, visit Expansive.com. And as always, we're very thankful that you have come to watch The Connect Show. So if you're out there on social media land watching us and you have a topic that you think we should be discussing, or if you're a business who wants to be on the show, please reach out to us at The Ideas. I did it again. Did it again. At Space ideas at the connection.com. There's no the in front of the ideas. We should create that too, just to, but it's, just to cover our base. We should. Yeah, we should. Because ideas, I say it all the time. Uh, ideas <laughs> at the connection.com. Absolutely. We have to also thank our guests from last week, Phil Gerbachek and Tom Ghosh. Um, they were two people who knew how to present to a room. Fun, mm -hmm. fun, great guys. Some great sales. sales uh, yep. Lots yeah. of sales stuff. And, mm -hmm. 
money. We like to talk about money and we accounting. We and mean, it was we're gonna talk about money today. It's I have a feeling. Get Phil was oh, in yeah. shorts and colorful clothes. Yeah. It made us feel like we weren't in. He's still February. kind of a traitor to Wisconsin. I still kind. Of, I, I still got to call him up for that. I think <laughs> so. He's got like Wisconsin in his heart, and then he moved down to Florida. It was <laughs> super super fun to connect with them. Um, why don't you tell us much about this week's guests? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, I kept my screen up where it always says Mitch, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah. I, I like taking, I like handwriting my notes. Like um, Lori paper. Rifkin <laughs> is here today and Lori has the gift of gab and the gift of financing and accounting, which I got to be honest, not a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people who can command a room in on a networking side of things, but also be super in tune with networking and finances. A lot of times those are very separate skills. And Lori is fantastic at both of them. He is an Illinois grad, so we won't hold it against him that Illinois did sweep the Badgers this year in basketball. And did you did you win the football game this year too? I think you did. Ugh. Um, but Lori, it really loves to peer into the soul of people and to find out what they're all about. He believes in meeting people first and then the business will follow. Like I said, he's got a finance and accounting background. He's going to teach us a lot about the cash and cash being king. He's kind of like your CFO for life. Like he can help you with your finances on the business side of things, but he's also a great, um, a great student of everything that life has to teach us. So super excited to hear that everything that Lori is going to share with us today. And then Rachel Lamantia is here as well. Um, do you remember the quiz when we were kids? The word bookkeeping has like double O, double K, double E. I, I feel like it should be double P as well. Like I feel like she should have four double letters in a row, but it doesn't. Um, but she is our in-house bookkeeper. She loves small businesses, has a lot of history with small businesses. In high school, she pulled a goodwill hunting. She and her friends used to do math problems for fun before school started. Kind of like, remember that scene with Matt Damon solving? I don't know if they solved proofs that like were unsolvable to anybody else on earth, but she loves getting into the math of not just bookkeeping and accounting, but of life. She's worked, uh, she and her dad started a disaster restoration company um, when she was first out of school. She's also a musician. I have a feeling her life's about to be turned upside down because it's about to be tax prep season. And she's got that going on. Um, she did go to UW Lacrosse, so I assume she uh, she could probably tell us about the Pearl. If you guys know the ice cream place, the Pearl up at, at, up in Lacrosse, it's amazing candy shop, ice cream shop. She could probably talk for twenty minutes just about that. But super excited to hear about all the bookkeeping and financial tips from Rachel as well. So some good, really good financial foundational thought going on on today's show. So Lori, Rachel, cannot wait. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks awesome. So much, you have me thinking all about candy and ice cream now. I like, <laughs> yeah, I that's all I can, that that's all I can think. I'd of never right been now. to lacrosse before. And we <laughs> went there a couple summers ago and we went there the day we got there. And then my kids were like, no, we have to go back there. And we're like, do you want to go to somewhere new? We're here for two days. Like, no, we got to go no, back there. No. We got, we got we the like ice cream it. this we time. We got to like fill it. up on the, on the candy and all that sort of stuff too. So <laughs> no chicks. That's, great. that's awesome. So the connection was better when it's interactive. So please add your comments in the chat. We'll be watching and we'll bring them up and have them join the conversation. It's a great opportunity to get some expert advice. So if you, when you see Lori and Rachel on, if you have any questions for them, put them in the chat. Absolutely. We are all volunteers here at the connect show connect show. So if you'd like to get involved, email us at <laughs> ideas at the connect show.com. We want to thank everyone involved, Mitch, Tracy, myself, mm -hmm. John, uh, we all, we all volunteer. So if you want to help again, email ideas at the connect show.com. There's space for everyone. Um, even if you contribute via chat, that is helping us keep this show on the road. So we're all in this together. Let's hear from, we have nothing for that. So let's go right on to our quote <laughs> of the day. Okay. Our quote of the day is think a little differently from the herd and you'll see things they can't or won't by Christopher Mansky, I believe the yep. prepared investor. Think yep. a little differently think from the that. herd and you'll see things they can't or won't. Ooh, that's like, think about that. that. That's deep. Yeah. Like can, yeah. Pretty deep. See, yeah. yeah. You can see can my see, head. I, right. Like you can see coming out of I'm your going ears out and... of the box literally as yeah. we're, as I'm saying it. Yeah. yeah. That's an awesome quote. And, and I think 
we all try to do that, you know, mm-hmm. whether we're, whether we're good at it or not is a whole nother story. Mm-hmm. Um, but whether you're a small business owner or some, or a solopreneur, or you're a cog in a corporate machine or whatever it might be, we're all trying to figure out how we can maximize our output and Absolutely. maximize, but it's also that way we maximize <laughs> what we bring in as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we can just think a little differently than how we've been taught traditionally, and I think I think the workforce, I think the workspace is leaning more and more into that yeah. as we move along in this crazy thing called life. Yeah. We're, all, we're all figuring out that we do all have to have our own perspective on things. We mm-hmm. can't just buy into the way things were done years ago. Absolutely. And we all have a little bit something different to offer as well. Mm-hmm. It's not just, you know, maybe thinking outside of the box. Maybe you have just, you do the exact same thing as someone else, but you have a little bit of knowledge in one other little thing. Right. So mm-hmm. I kind of mm-hmm. look at it like that too. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. guys, we're ready to get started. Let's with get this question of the day. I think we are. So oh, we all do networking in this room, all of us. That's true. So when you're at a networking event, do you want to get to know the participants on a personal level? or a professional level, or both? Or which do you want to know more of? Or when you're at the networking event, is it something like you want to learn about them professionally there and then decide if you want to have another conversation with them? Like, how how do you think about all this? I, I, I love networking. You know that. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm just jumping right on in. I want to know what they do just in general, because it is about their personal aspect too. But to build a relationship, I want to know more about them and who they are and what they do. And do they have kids and do they like to travel or, you know, take it just a little bit deeper than, hi, I'm an accountant. Nice to meet you. Great. I know 50 of them. What is, what is going to, what is my relationship going to be better Mm -hmm. with you? How do we connect on a personal level? Right. Because I'm going to want to work with you more if we have more things in common, I think. Yep. And I took this question straight from Lori because Lori um, has run for a number of years, Lunch with Lori, mm-hmm. where he really focuses on, on the personal, yeah, on, yeah. The, on the personal connections. Um, you know, I've had the pleasure to attend Lunch with Lori, and um, and there's always like a list of questions that you're that you fill out that are personal <laughs> questions that are a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, that are a little little off the wall, and then oftentimes in the networking event itself. He, he goes through and he picks, you know, kind of the ones that set you apart or that he thinks are going to be more memorable. But then you have the opportunity to connect on, you know, whether it's a great trip you had or a great fa- uh, a great childhood memory or whatever it might be, where, again, we're developing those deeper relationships, those deeper levels. So, again, it's not just the accountant. It's as, oh, wait, you're the accountant who has a couple of kids and you guys went to Disney and we were talking about, you know, whatever, whatever that conversation might lend itself to. Right. Those deeper connections are what help us all along. One of Lori's questions, what's the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you? And he always pulls that one out too. Yeah. That <laughs> list of questions uh, and, and changes. I, I actually remember <laughs> mine. And it's uh, it was, yeah, it's still too. like to this day, I'm still in touch with the person yeah. it happened to. And like, yeah, I, I don't think he picked that one for me. So thank you, Lori. Right, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I appreciate that. yeah, I remember when I, I was on a couple of his events like that. And it, I had to think about some of those answers going, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know which... So it was kind of neat to be able to think about, go back and think about some of those things that happened in your life that you don't really well, and then spend when you any hear time other people's about. answers, then it stirs, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. memories as well. And I'm excited to hear from Rachel as well, because Rachel with the bookkeeping background also knows the importance of, of networking mm-hmm. and of telling your story. Because again, kind of to your point, Kim, we meet accountants, we meet bookkeepers, we meet people who handle finances every day in our life, but Rachel's going to have a, a, her perspective on why you choose her. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's a connection for some of us. Maybe, maybe we connect with somebody else on a different level. Um, but again, we go back to your fav- your famous favorite quote. Here it is. Collaboration, mm-hmm. not, not competition. competition. That's right. That's and right. There's room for all of us. In Absolutely. The sandbox, right? We all have something different to offer. Yeah. And especially when it comes to your finances, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm trying to pick somebody for my financial stuff, I'm going to have to like them a lot. And trust. (laughs) That goes to that no like and trust thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we hear it a thousand times, but Mm -hmm. it's really true, especially when it comes to your money. Right. And and, and when, you know, like this time of year, when, you know, we're checking the mail every day for what tax, when it says tax documents important, Mm, I just want to put that all in a room and burn that room to the ground because I don't want to deal with it. That's that's my (laughs) take on it. Don't do that, everybody. Do not follow my advice. Yeah. Or I just put them all in an envelope and then I pass them on to that trusted financial person. Yeah. Right. Yep. Here, I just got all these. Yeah. 
Yes. Mine all goes into a spot in the safe <laughs> and it wrong. doesn't get seen until mm -hmm. tax time. Yeah. That's right. Yes. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess we're all similar like that. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. 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 I thought I was the only one who did that. Well, and it's funny because, you know, Rachel about like doing math in high school, like I was a math, I was a math kid too. Like yeah. I, I would, I would find like the books with math problems or logic problems. I love doing that. And, and I still enjoy that concept. But for whatever reason, like the taxes and stuff like that, I think I freaked myself out about it. Oh. Yeah. And so I'd love to hear from Lori and Rachel about like the mental aspect yeah. of when you're doing your finances or, or you're looking at them. And it's like, I have definitely psyched myself out of anything financial, like dealing with my business. And, and so whether it's taxes or whatever it might be, I know I can do it. Mm. But I've psyched myself out. And so yeah. I'm excited to hear Probably how they partially because it's yours. Like, right. I wonder if yeah. they psych themselves out about right. their Right, like own. I could do, like, yeah. if somebody else brought me their tax stuff, I could do it. Yeah. Or their finances or, exactly. or their exactly. p &L sheet yeah. or whatever yep. it might yeah. be. Sure. Um, but it's, yeah. We but had absolutely. something on the screen from Adam while oh. we were chatty chatting. Oh, nice. Oh, there it is. Both personal lets their it's guard down first. And in turn, better communication to lead to their professional expertise. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. really hard for me to get out. It was. I don't know why. Adam says... Professionally, <laughs> personally, get people's guard down yeah, when you're right. networking. Right. Yeah. You know, that helps people. Yeah. But then the communication mm -hmm. leads to great professional expertise, but also professional relationships. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think right. that's mm -hmm. the next level mm -hmm. when you're talking about getting personal and hearing about people's jobs is the creation of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Because that's at the end of the day, kind of what you said about you want somebody who we trust yes. with our finances. Mm -hmm. It's that relationship that's been created. That's what's going to get us to the next level mm -hmm. in creating these professional relationships that are, again, are going to be mutually be mm -hmm. beneficial and help us in the long run. And if I can just a little bit, I it makes me, I, I do a lot of networking, not just for my personal relationships, but who I can refer to other people. I mm -hmm. feel a comfort level. I love to refer somebody mm -hmm. to somebody and say, you know what? No, this person, you guys have personalities that match each other. I think you would work so good together. And I'm sure Tracy feels this a lot too. We both get questioned. Who, do you have anyone that you could recommend for X, Y, or Z? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I almost always have someone. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I know Tracy does. Because Tracy's been, I mean, she runs a lot more networking groups than I even do. So definitely a question for me a lot. And it's yep. important. Well, and that, that builds trust. Again, that builds your relationship mm -hmm. with that person. If you can let lead them to a trusted mm -hmm. advisor or right. a trusted connection, that just builds up everybody's, you know, self-esteem, confidence, mm -hmm. and professional relationships and success, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I could what dig through success, a <laughs> I could right. dig through a stack of business cards and say, sure, here's five of these. Right, but right. oh, I met that person and I liked this about that person and they'd yeah. like it or not. So yeah. it almost sounds like I think we all agree that it might be better to get to know them personally when you get to first know them and then move into the business stuff later yeah. because why even bother with the business stuff at first? <laughs> In general, I want to know like your first. Yeah, I want to yeah. know your profession <clears throat> and move right on from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Nice. Ooh, I'm curious to see how our guests are going to answer that question, too. <clears throat> Anything else going on in the chat over there, Mr. John Taylor, producer John? We got one. Oh, he just wants to say thanks to me for my kind words Saturday night at Mary and my special event. You're the best. This is my famous Rick. Mm -hmm. I had to do, um, I went to a Citizen of the Year dinner for um, City mm -hmm. of St. Francis okay. and Rick and his wife, Mary, were the recipients of the award. And well, I spoke on, and yeah. yeah. And so I spoke on their behalf. They are absolutely wonderful, amazing people. They watch, well, Mary watches a show every week. And, and Rick, Rick is, is like, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? So now, thank you, Rick, for watching today. Appreciate awesome. it. So, yeah, thank you. Nice job, Kim. I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so fun. So, that's all we got going on in the chat. I right. think we're ready to work on our first guest. Are we, John, are you going to get behind the scenes there? Yes. <laughs> got, there, he there he is. There he is. Hey, how are you doing? So, yep, they give me my, my two minutes while we do a quick changeover. So, welcome to the brand new Studio A5. We are so glad to be in our new space here at Expansive. We have a beautiful corner office overlooking the beautiful city of Wauwatosa and salad dressing. And um, it's just, and paper towel, is, is that back there too? Yeah. Who put that there? Ah, oh, geez. Um, it's behind but the scenes. It's behind the, the scenes. scenes. This is what it looks like. You know, there's paper towel and salad dressing. What kind of party are we having? But 
um, yeah, we're just really glad to be in our new studio. Uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, studio tour videos later on. I'd love to show you around. Um, better yet, come on down. Let's hang out. You can sit in the chair, see what it feels like. It's it's just a it's a fun experience to 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 be in the studio. Um, we have the Ellen set going on over there. It's uh, under construction. Thrive is using it right now. Thrive Human, Human Development Company. And uh, I'd love to join you and give you a little tour. So back to you, Kim and Tracy. Hey. Hey. Welcome, Lori. Welcome, welcome. Well, well it's, it's a pleasure, pleasure being here. I remember being in the studio with John, John working on an online course and being petrified of being in front of the camera. And now and look, now, now here you are. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're yeah. like, oh, I'm It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> That's awesome. So, well, Lori Rifkin is a CPA, has almost 40 years of general business experience. His expertise ranges from accounting, operations, sales, and marketing as an owner and employee. He does fractional CFO work with a focus on business improvement. He also acts as a mentor to his clients, sharing his 44 years of nosiness experience. His focus is on prof prof profitable and sustainable growth. Finally That's got that. Mouthful. I know. I right. I got it out though. He is a generalist in approach and thought process, a critical thinker and agent of change. His personality can provide the details to build a reality that does not exist yet. Staff it, write the operating procedures, and train the staff. He lives in Milwaukee with his wife. He is also active in teaching others how to network with his Lunch with Lori networking approach. That's another mouthful. I know. You get just so you got a lot of say. stuff going on. It, yeah. it is a lot of stuff. <laughs> it is. So welcome again to the show. So referring back to our audience question today, networking. So you've done some pretty significant networking in your past. What what are your key tips that you'd like to say about networking? I think you hit about it earlier, developing a relationship first. I went to lunch with a young gentleman yesterday. We did not talk about business for one second. And I know everything about his life. I know about his kids, his hobbies, why he has those hobbies. I know about him. And more than that, because I liked him after learning that, I gave him advice and I gave him homework. And he has to get back to me. So networking is about really learning about others, but also helping them. And you can't help somebody unless you know about them. And so I don't care if I ever do business with him. That's something I learned. I get more business now. I don't ask for any business or talk about business. It's counterintuitive. And you mentioned before about the herd. I go against the herd every time, and that's against the herd. Absolutely do. Absolutely do. I always uh, enjoyed your your networking events and your approach. Do people get irritated with the homework? Absolutely. That's the whole point. Of it. <laughs> because the people who get irritated are the ones who actually do it. The ones who just sit there and don't respond, they're not going to follow through. No. Right. It's almost like a little bit of a test. It is a test. It is a test. Life is a test in every, mm -hmm. everything you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So why does your infrastructure curve need to be ahead of your sales curve to have a profitable growth? I worked mm. for a company once that had hockey stick growth, you know, growing 30% a year. Um, mm -hmm. Their infrastructure was their quality control and testing. They fell behind in that and forgot to put a key ingredient in their product. And had a $20 million class action lawsuit against oh. them. So they had all that sales growth, but their infrastructure, making sure that quality was always in place, was lacking. And so mm -hmm. I learned many times that your infrastructure curve has to be ahead of your sales curve. Also, it's going to be harder for you to have profitable growth. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean, very true. Very quality true. control is like a number one, right? Mm -hmm. And people love to sue. Mm -hmm. Oh, do they love to sue? Yes, so, they do. Yeah. So why is why is cash king and not sales then? Um, sales take cash to finance. You, if you're going fast and you don't have a cash business and you finance an accounts receivable, um, every sale is not cash right away. Yet you're paying for your inventory. So the more the faster you're growing, the more cash it takes. And most owners don't understand that. Having slower go growth could actually be the sweet spot of profitability and cash flow. Hmm. Interesting. Slower growth. Who what, who actually thinks like I want to grow slow? Not many people think that. No, I no. do. No, <laughs> John's I like uh uh millions. <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I get freaked out if it's going too fast, and all of a sudden I'm worried that I can't handle it. Then I'm going to fail the clients, and then mm -hmm. that freaks me out. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally on the the slow 
up climb because mm-hmm. I think slow is steady wins the race. <laughs> but we're in society, we're we're an instant message, everything done in one second. Society sound bites are two seconds long. So again, that's the herd. When you go with slow, profitable growth, you're going against the herd mentality. Mm. Well, then maybe I'm going against the herd. Then you're probably yeah. doing it right. I hope right so. Because that's why need, you're still in business I need all these to years get, later. Yeah. So I step it up a little bit, then I plateau, I adjust, I get used to that, and then I'm like, okay, let's Let's bring it up again. Let's yeah. bring it. And then I keep doing it, you know, bring it up, plateau, bring it up, plateau. It's, it's, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Lunch with Lori had to pull back because I didn't have the infrastructure to do all my regular work and do that. And it's the hardest thing to pull back from something that's successful. Yeah. Most business owners in my shoes would have tried to done everything and they would have wound up failing at the end. So sometimes mm-hmm. you have to give up even ideas or things that could be profitable because it could kill you getting there. Mm -hmm. But you left it kind of on a success. So if there's time, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a little extra time. Maybe I'm going to have a lunch with Lori. I think it could still be successful. I still do that. Go on podcasts. Now I take a different version of it. Mm -hmm. I'll do more private networking events, which is the secret of networking. The ratio of private networking events to open to the public ones is one of the keys to success. Mm -hmm. The more private networking events you get to is usually a higher quality contact. I agree. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of like the networking events with 50 to 100 people because you, I mean, if you're having a quality conversation with somebody, you're maybe going to talk to three people that whole time. Yeah. And you could have missed out on some amazing people because the room was so large. Yep. I would agree with you. So, so when you're talking like private events, are you talking about uh, events <clears throat> where there's like a membership fee that you have to pay for to no. be included or... Like, how um, do you make it private versus public? Um, there was an organization in town. I'm not going to use the name because I've learned, too, that private events, they don't like publicity. Mm-hmm. They had a private um, party, and you just do years of networking, got on a list, and it's a lot of high net worth, high, um, mm-hmm. high-end business people. And the contacts in there were way different than going to, say, a normal networking event. Interesting. So you want to get on their list. You want to work your way to get on their list. And I can't remember how I got on these lists. Oh. But I will tell you, some of those lists I'm on, people will tell me now that because I'm a good networker and I don't just come and sit there and don't talk, that they invite me, even though I might not ever do business with those people. Most of those people I will never do business with. Right. But they might know people that you could do business with. Correct. Or <laughs> vice versa. Right. Right. Vice versa. Or you might go on a vacation with one of them. <laughs> all I mean, right. you know, there's many different ways to have perks and networking. It's not all business. There's fun too. It is not business. I had, uh, because of networking, I got a client and the client has become a friend. His family had COVID. And so I let him stay in my Airbnb and he was so appreciative that mm. that was worth so much. So that became a network contact, became a customer who became a friend. Mm-hmm. That's the progression you want. That's beautiful progression. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Beautiful that should be one of the goals in one year networking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're not taught that way. No, no. Yeah, a lot of people are not taught that way. They're taught to go after the sale. You know, do the pitch. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not going to make a sale in that room with people, then they never come back again. And I just wonder how that approach really works or not. In some businesses, it works because they're transactional, mm-hmm. but in one that develops that needs a relationship to really perform long term, it doesn't work. So, why does your need your business need a large network of contacts? And I have to ask you, how are you tracking those contacts? Because that is a thing. <laughs> oh, you want the little secret? Yeah. I have no CRM. I don't track anything. I have a pile of business cards <laughs> scattered all over my desk, <laughs> and I go out there and have a bigger network than people who are organized. So it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the organization. Um, it, it, some people might, but it doesn't. But here's why you need it. We typically look at networking to get business, like a direct sale. I look at it to get potential customers, potential vendors, friends, and a sale. I have a mm-hmm. four to one ratio. Yeah. I want four outputs. That wide group, I get vendors who help me take care of my property. I get vendors. I walk into a customer. Oh, I have someone who can help you here. I help staff my customers. That's another difference between a regular accountant and being a networked accountant. I help them find new employees. I help them with sales and marketing. I sat in a meeting with one of my customers the other day. They're going to spend close to $80,000 on marketing. And in five minutes, came up with a whole theme that no one else thought about. Mm -hmm. That was worth a year's worth of work for that company. Absolutely, it was. 
absolutely was. And that comes from why network being exposed to a lot. Mm -hmm. I I think think for me, it's it's definitely definitely more what I can give than what I can get. Always Mm -hmm. with whatever contacts and where you keep the business cards, I keep the email addresses because I'm going to, I fly off more emails. Probably I can get a lot more done with emailing than I can with a phone call, but they're not spammy emails. It's one at a time, you know? So yeah, you're right. And and something I learned in the last year, which even myself, no one teaches you, how do you deal with networking success? Everyone's always on the build part. Yeah. What is the success part of networking look like for me? It overwhelmed me. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely. I could go to lunch and breakfast every single day. Yes. I could go to events every single day of the week. I could probably get more business than I could ever handle. How do you deal with that success? You, have, I had to pull back because it was wearing me out. Absolutely. So no mm-hmm. one thinks about networking success. They're so focused on the front. They don't think what the back is like. And the back wears you down. It does. It, it does. absolutely does. And I'm kind of facing that right now where I'm having to pull back from certain things to excel in other things. But I know, you know, I'm hopefully, hopefully always welcome back to the ones when I, I do have to pull back and you can't attend every single thing every single week. Maybe I can't attend this week, but I can next week. Mm-hmm. And so um, not leaving on just like, see, ya, you know, and it depends. I don't like a lot of the paid type networking either. Because I think, you know, you shouldn't have to pay to build a good relationship with someone. I would agree. But it it takes going to those and being seen at those to get on a private network. You're absolutely correct. Because if someone looks at you as you're well-connected, it's easier to get in a private network. Mm -hmm. You're just not going Mm -hmm. there for business. It's to give. You bring a lot to people. Yes. You give a lot. There was one, a a private bank event I went to. I meet the president of the bank, who's a pretty large bank. He goes, I love reading your posts. I would never do that. He never likes, never comments. But I have his I have his ear because <laughs> he reads about what I do and enjoys it. And so being out there and sharing sharing your knowledge mm-hmm. is critical to getting it in private networking groups. It's awesome. Something to think about, everybody, the private networking groups. Getting on the list. <laughs> I don't know. I I could talk about networking. I'm going to start creating a list. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make a private networking group, you guys. Oh, boy. I've been motivated. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. you got her going, Lori. Will, will you invite me? Okay. I don't know. I don't know if you're going to cut and make the cut. Oh, no. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. You'll well, anyone be, in this room make be, it. You'll probably be the da, first da, da. one. And then I'm going to have to say to you, okay, so what have you done already that has failed and has been good? Because I always try to not reinvent the wheel. Just... I want to learn all the things first before I do it. So I'm going to go pick your brain now. <laughs> so we ta- we talked a little bit about, um, you know, finances and a lot about networking. If you had to change someone's business in 30 seconds and you could give them one tip, what would that be today? And this is something most people won't even understand what I'm going to say is when you go through your monthly review of how your business is doing, throw away the income statement, throw away the balance sheet and focus all your time in the statement of cash flows and you will be well rewarded down the road. And mm. I have not, I've taken over a lot of business from accountants and none of them do that. Against the herd again. Against the mm-hmm. herd. Mm-hmm. Against the herd again. But if you're going to be against the herd, there's one critical thing you have to do. You have to li- deliver results. You cannot go against the herd by just shooting your mouth off. Sure. You have to deliver tangible results. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's where your 40 herd, plus yeah. years of knowledge of this stuff comes in. You know where you can go against the herd a little bit. And you totally understand that. So thanks so much for joining oh, us today, Lori. It was absolutely wonderful. Oh, oh, I thought I thought I was laughing? being called for something. I was getting finger snaps. That was he was happy. Thanks he was lot, happy. Mitch. Do you have an offer or an event or anything you'd like to share with our audience today? No, but if people connect with me on LinkedIn, I have time. I'll go to lunch and so connect with me on Ooh, LinkedIn. Uh, lunch dates. Um, That's an offer. I'm trying. That is an I'm, offer. I'm trying to do that again. Like go out at least once or twice a week to lunch and meet new people. Beautiful. Um, connect with me. Give me a story. I get a million. I'm sure everyone here gets a million uh, messages of people trying to connect with you. Mm-hmm. I spend those, I spend those around. I did that yesterday. Someone says I could help make you so much more efficient. <laughs> My reply back to him is how do you know I can't help you be more efficient? <laughs> I love I it. Go, you know, nothing about me. And you're already telling me how you could help me. I love it. I was I was doing that for a while when I was getting all the spam stuff. I was sending them to a blog on my website about spamming people on LinkedIn. <laughs> so go read this and then contact me afterwards. Well, if you want to connect with Lori, we do have a page on the website for him, theconnectshow.com 
forward slash Lori Rifkin, which John has on the screen. And um, his LinkedIn profile will be right on there for you to connect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you on the show. It was fun being on the show. It was was so much calmer today, John, than the first time I came here (laughs) in front of that camera. Good. It's awesome. That's all. In his his great new studio setup. Right. Very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> and do we have another moment for John? Here we go. Should go over there now. Okay. Oh, sorry. Welcome everybody to the Connect Show. We're so glad to have you here. Uh, we are here every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Join us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube's. And now for our next guest. Take it away, Kim and Tracy. We have our next guest will be Rachel Lamantia, a math-loving Wisconsin girl. Rachel has a heart for entrepreneurs. She understands their challenges and sympathizes with the complexities of running a business while balancing the daily to-dos and strategically planning for financial security. And Rachel has owned and operated multiple businesses and is fascinated by what makes them succeed. She loves numbers and puzzles as we've already heard about her numbers before going to school and is grateful every day that she gets to run a business that uses those passion to help others. So welcome Rachel to the show. Welcome Rachel. (laughs) We're going to refer back to the audience question. I'm hoping you do a lot of networking and if you do, do you have, do you seek professional um, information, personal information or both? Um, absolutely both. I love networking and, um, I agree with a lot of the conversation that you guys have had so far. Um, I, and it wasn't always like that. I, if you are the person that networking intimidates you, that was me 12 years ago. And I had, I put in a lot of practice. I had coffee with a lot of people, I walked into a lot of rooms, completely terrified. And after a while, and practice, you just learn how to talk to people and show up in an authentic way because people do business with people they trust. I completely agree with that. And you have to get to know people on a personal level in order to also build the trust professionally. And now some of my closest friends in the area are from professional events. You know, we've done spinoff events, some of those private events like you're talking about. Um, so yeah, I agree with a lot of what's already been said this morning. I agree with that. I've made a lot of friends just Mm -hmm. from the networking. So absolutely. So what are some of your bookkeeping best practices and some of your top bookkeeping mistakes? Oh, that's a lot. I could talk a long time about that stuff. Um, the best practice, I guess, number one, if I had to say anything, is to like pay attention to your finances and your numbers. I see so many times people wait and put it off. They're trying to do it themselves or it's just not a priority because let's face it, as a small business owner, we have a ton of things that we need to do. This is a really easy thing to put on the back burner, um, but it is absolutely critical to your success. Like the SBA has some crazy statistics about success rates for businesses who actually pay attention to their finances. It goes from like a third up to like 75%. So it's just really important to pay attention to it, even if you have that block around it, like so many people do around their finances. Um, That's probably the biggest thing that I see is like, it's just People don't make it important, even though it is, because it's not urgent. It's something that's just really easy to put off. About how um, none of us want to do anything with our finances or look at our tax information, but you are your own bookkeeper. So how do you feel about doing your own bookkeeping and your taxes? And are you the same way to just push it, push it off to somebody else? Or do you actually, are you okay with looking at your own stuff? That's really, that's really funny because I actually spent the evening last night, like putting together my tax stuff. Um, (laughs) I like looking at my numbers, you know, there's the old adage about the cobbler's kid not having shoes. And um, I believe in practicing what I preach. So I look at my numbers every month. I do it usually after my client stuff is done. Um, 
but I do believe in looking at it and I love digging in. So like that piece, I really love. I am not a tax person though. I hand that tax packet off to somebody who is really good at keeping up with the laws and doing taxes. Um, so I know my lane and I understand what I need to in order to build a healthy business. Um, but I also know, you know, when it's time to hand off to somebody else who knows what they're doing. That's really important to really kind of mm -hmm. an important key bookkeeping and tax preparation are two totally separate things and two totally yeah. separate people. A lot of people kind of lump that all into one. So and they're um, related. Like we work yeah. really closely with tax preparers. We have our clients sure. do an introduction that we can, you know, email back and forth and we can be a liaison. Um, but it does take kind of a separate skill set. Like being in the data all the time is different than researching laws. Like it's a different kind of person and mindset who likes each of those two things. I agree. Mm -hmm. So how can a non-financially minded person train themselves to be able to read statements like a PL? Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all that, all that good stuff you finance people are so good at. Um, that's a really good question. And you can learn over time. I I like to tell people just start somewhere. You know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Just start somewhere. Put 30 minutes on your calendar every month and just start looking at your statements and start finding resources with whatever time you have left. Books, podcasts, Google. Talk to professionals. Make an appointment with your bookkeeper or accountant if you have it. If you spend just 30 minutes every month, two years from now, you're going to have like 12 hours of learning into it and you're going to get a little bit better each time. Um, that's my best tip to overcome the intimidation. You don't have to become like super amazing in the next two months, but if you start somewhere and slowly get better over time, you're going to be in a lot better position as you go forward. Well, when it comes to uh, small businesses, what kind of clients do you enjoy working with? Is it the smaller one person owned business? Is it a bigger size business? And then um, in addition to that, what kind of things can they expect when they decide to work with you? Do you do you help them organize their stuff or help them learn some of these things you just talked about also? Sure. Um, well, we work with kind of a range of small businesses. And we do have solo people and people who are just starting out and we go up to the point where you outgrow us. Like once you hit a certain point, you have enough stuff going on that you should have somebody on staff. Um, so we work with, you know, startups up to that point where you kind of outgrow outsourcing. And really the people I like working with is more about the personality and their approach than necessarily the type of business, you know, just like, if you talk with anybody, the people they like to work with, people who are appreciative and responsive and like value what you do, that's where we can really build the relationship and make a difference. So um, the other part of your question is when people work with us, we're, we're full service. Like we will do the thing for you. Um, we have clients who never sign into QuickBooks if they don't want to. Um, so we kind of take the, the doing part off of your plate so that you can focus on um, being the business owner and, you know, reviewing it and starting to use that to run your business instead of having to do it. Um, and I do have upgrade options if people want strategy calls with me, um, which I actually really love to do. Um, I had one with a client a couple months ago, right before the end of the year, just talking about, well, if we do this or have this scenario, what does that look like for profitability? And the feedback you get is amazing. Like the clarity that comes out of those conversations for the clients is really cool to see. Super awesome. Very Super fun. awesome. Well, I think we've got I'm sure we've got some people in the audience that are inspired to reach out to our two guests today about their different practices that they do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I asked Lori one question. I'm going to ask you a little bit different one. If So I see you've got a decent, a decent collection of books, and Tracy and I love to learn about <laughs> oh, yeah. different books. Yeah. So She's... if there was a book that you could recommend to somebody to get them quick started for that 30 minutes of training a day, do you have a book, whether it's finance related or not, that you would love to recommend? I know I totally put you on the spot. You but. did. And I love so many business books. 
Um, probably one of the most famous business authors is Mike Michalowicz. He wrote Profit First, which I use a modified version with some clients. You can see Fix This Next and some other ones on there. Um, he's a good author. I also, you know, love some of the classics like the E Myth and the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, those are the ones that are coming top of mind right now. Um, I think that's fabulous. Mm -hmm, that you gave yeah. us quite a lift right off the top of your head. I think it was great. Yeah. I asked for one, you gave like five. So that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And all those books I've read. So I totally agree with you. They're great books. Yeah. Uh, do you have any specials or offers for the audience today? Anything you'd like to offer them? Uh, if you want to connect with me, I love, like we talked about, I love networking and expanding my network. I have like the Rolodex in my head all the time. Um, so connect with me on LinkedIn. If you, and if you are interested in talking further or have questions about bookkeeping, you can go to my website and connect with me there. I do free consultations for anyone who might be a good fit. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to um, be a resource to anyone. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you on the show today. Um, and we do have a page for you on the website also that everybody can connect with you. And um, I don't know. That's all I got. I think that's so, too. Thank you for joining us today. I do think the link might be wrong on the screen. It's M-A-N-T-I-A. -A. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's OK. Sometimes yeah. we have we don't know. We don't, we we'll don't we'll get it gonna, fixed. It's we'll fine. Get it fixed. It's right on the Connect Show. If you go but to you, the Connect Show .com, go to past guests, you can find Rachel. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. and we'll get your link fixed. Yeah. Awesome. So it's perfect. Thanks so thank you so much for joining us today. We enjoyed having you. And yeah, thank you. We'll be look at that. Look at how fast he is. And it's perfect. There we go. <laughs> That's fixed. <now>. Thank, <laughs> thank you. He says so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Well, awesome. I definitely am leaving motivated mm -hmm. and inspired, and I'm going to do my 30, I'm feeling 30 minutes guilt. a month. I'm, I'm feeling guilt. I don't know about you. I bit. need to spend a little bit more time on my podcast. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. But I have been, I've always done my own finances, mm -hmm. and I have realized, actually, that is one of my goals for 2023, is I am moving forward to hiring someone there you to go. doing my bookkeeping and my um, and my tax preparation. And I usually do both. We've got something. Adam, also any viewer of The Connect Show, he'll offer 50% off rent for six months on a year lease if they're looking for a dedicated office to jumpstart their business. Oh. You could come hang out with us every Tuesday. And add that. 25% off a year. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at math. That. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. Right. That's what we have accountants for. Yes. But hey, that's going to help your finances. So you're feeling guilt. What are you feeling guilt about? Oh, like 30 minutes a month. I mean, yeah, like some months I do really good. With, like in the beginning of the year, I do really good at that. And then come September, October, November, December, I'm just like, I don't want to look at this anymore. And now I'm dealing with the, oh, I got to go back. And now you got to recap three months. Now I that's gotta exactly yeah. what I go through yeah. every single so year. Like that's where the guilt comes in. Because had I just stuck with it for the whole rest of the year. I would be already on target already. Yeah. Like I use a mile app and I'm so good about it for like the first six to nine months of the year. And then I ruined myself the last three months mm -hmm. of the year. And now I got to spend two hours cleaning that, mm -hmm. cleaning that app up mm -hmm. for calculating my miles. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, I'm with you. On that. Yeah. So the bookkeeper not only does your stuff, but it keeps you on in, in line. So you Check. don't have these things happen to you. Check. So yeah. So absolutely. Awesome I thought that was great. So we want to thank all of our volunteers for helping out today. And thanks for everybody for coming into the studio. We've got uh, all the people behind the scene. John over here is doing a little dance. Um, and we want to join our next show next week featuring John Neal and John Fisher. John Fisher, two Johns. For some reason, my update didn't show up. Yeah. But John That's Fisher right. will be here too. Yes. Yes. More money. Great. Money, money, money. Mm hmm Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Help our community grow, reaching out, inviting just one person, mm -hmm. each person that watches this. If you invite one person to watch a show live, they can benefit from being part of our journey. They can like, subscribe, mm -hmm. comment, all of the fun stuff if you're watching us live or the recap. Um, mm -hmm. The little act goes a long way. And if you saw something you like, even after the fact, please comment. And we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you.